Thank you so much, uh, Corinne, and thank you all for staying after so many talks. Uh, and um, uh, actually, every year we um, have conversations with Corinne about the art and architecture presence at Convoco, and I'm so delighted that this series um, can, uh, can continue. We had Adam Curtis in Salzburg, Eddie Rama, Hito Steil, also last year, of course, Martha Jungwirth. And, um, Incredibly delighted to have Francis Carey. It's a dream for Corinne and me from the very first beginning when we talked about the theme of equality in an unequal world. It was our dream to actually have Francis here with us in, uh, in Salzburg. And uh, Francis and I met many, many years ago, probably 15 years ago, thanks to Christoph Schlingensief, the late Christoph Schlingensief, the visionary artist and social sculptor and filmmaker and writer and many, many uh, aspects to his work. And of course, uh, it's Christoph who was the first client in Germany of Francis and invited him to do the uh, Opera Village. We then got to know each other very well when we worked on the Serpentine Pavilion 2017, um, an amazing project where actually Francis developed uh, a tree. We always have at the Serpentine uh, a pavilion on our lawn every year. It's a commission, uh, an annual architecture commission. It has free admission, uh, and it's important there are no doors. And that means, you know, thinking about equality and inequality. It is really fully accessible, not only for people who come and see it, but also for passerbys who maybe would never intend to visit an exhibit and just stumble across it and have, you know, can have a transformatory or transformational uh, experience. Uh, Saskia Sassen at the time talked about the importance actually of spaces where we can restore ourselves and said that Francis has created a space of indeterminacy where we can actually uh, freely you know, invent how we use the structure. This, this sort of aspect of participation is always very, very central in Francis Carey's work. Uh, and as I said, it was inspired by the tree that serves as a central meeting point of life in Francis's hometown in Gando. So it was a very responsive pavilion to connect its visitors also to nature. Now, Francis's work involves, of course, not only pavilions. There are so many dimensions. Francis began with an amazing school. We're going to hear about that in a minute. Uh, uh, generosity has always been part of the practice. Uh, and, of course, his intention to create the quality that we need to improve people's life. His work has expanded beyond school buildings in African countries to include structures in Denmark, Germany, Italy, Switzerland, the UK, the United States. There are two incredible parliament buildings we're going to talk about, the National Assembly of Burkina Faso, Ouagadougou, and also the Benin National Assembly in Porto Novo, uh, which have been uh, commissioned. Francis is also a professor, has been teaching for many years in Munich uh, at the Technische Universität. Uh, and, as Corinne said, has been actually just recently awarded the Pritzker Prize, the biggest prize there is in architecture, and it's the first time an African architect in 44 years has uh, received this prize, uh, also relevant in relation to the theme, thinking about the inequality uh, of such prizes. The Nobel Prize is another example, you know, if you think about the Nobel Prize of Literature and the fact that writers like Ngugi Vationgo have never had the Nobel Prize for Literature, uh, I think is very relevant. So, uh, to begin with the beginning, and I think before I start with my first question, uh, maybe we can all give another very warm welcome to the amazing Francis Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now this morning um, uh, we heard about Amatia Sen, and um, it was uh, uh, actually, um, I think, incredibly interesting to reread Amatia Sen in relation also to the theme here, to inequality, re-examine the book of Amatia Sen. And it begins with the following quote, the central question in the analysis and assessment of equality is equality of what? Amatia Sen, we always have to ask ourselves, equality of, of what? A common characteristic of virtually all the approaches to the ethics of social arrangements, which have actually stood the test of time, is to want equality of something, so of something specific. And that has been the case in Francis's work, in your work, Francis, since the beginning, the question of equality of education. That's also, of course, what uh, Thomas Piketty writes about in equality in an unequal world. 
uh, where he says the main force pushing towards reduction in equality has always been the diffusion of knowledge and the diffusion of education. And that's, of course, your very first project, which I think is now one of the 20 most important buildings in the world. So I thought maybe we could begin with that. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Hans. Thank you, Corinne. And thank you to everyone uh, for this incredible day of um, um, exchange and presentation of uh, what is in our world today and uh, what is inequality um, and how we can contribute uh, as professionals. Um, you know, I, I'm coming from, it's not a secret, I'm coming from a very poor country. Um, when I came to Germany, I got a scholarship uh, to be trained, further trained as a carpenter, um, uh, 18 months long. So, it, but you know, I arrived and, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the German call it, I love these words, Schlaraffenland, is the, you know, a sort of paradise. Um, there was a lot of food, a lot of beer, of course, uh, but, but, uh, but I was not interested in that. Uh, education was so free, accessible to everyone. And uh, I decided just to go at night school. During the day I was working and you could earn money also. There was something that was inspiring to me. So I went again in Berlin to a night school. It is still existing. And I did my degree after five years. And so I started to study. Okay, after two years university, I had the feeling I am very privileged. Okay, it was like, wow, great. I can, uh, you know, draw, I can put my imagination on the pa paper. So I decided to go back uh, as a privileged person to give something back. I wanted to create a school. Because when I was a kid, there was no school in my village. And I had to leave my, my home country when I was seven. And so I recalled myself uh, being a privileged uh, student in Germany, that I was sitting in benches and kids, we was wobbling like this, and you will have nails coming out and just make a hole in your bottom. And I wanted to do it better. So I went, I started to build schools. And we have four images, is, I yeah, think. Yeah. And that is one, the very first school, I built it as a student, and it doesn't uh, took longer. People uh, start to ask me to do similar building. And we did it out of clay, like on the site, abundant. And so uh, now there is a word in architecture called participation. And then get people to be part of it. People being talking long time about it. And I was doing it. Don't think that I sat on the table and came with a great idea to get the community to participate and it become a slogan in architecture. Uh, this was something existing in my, tr my, my tradition. And I had to raise money to build a very free school. And I had very little of it. So good, the good thing is, I could get people to be part of the construction site. What you see is even women, they was then, they now become part of what I'm doing. I didn't even, it just occurred during the process. And that what you see is, while I'm talking to you, maybe it's, it's late in Burkina, no, no, it's still day in Burkina, but some of my construction site, you will see this. I'm not needed anymore because I have a huge team, so I can talk to you. So the school project has paved a career. And so that is what we're going to talk about it. And you invented uh, many things with this building. You said you gave the building a shoe, a protective shoe yeah. and a hat. Yeah. In a way, uh, it also is something which in your childhood you always felt that um, the climate uh, was not possible in terms of the building. So it yeah. yeah. uh, has a different form of actually air coming yeah. in, yeah. Uh, of breathing. Can yeah. you talk about that? Yeah, it's about, you know, you living in a place where there is no resources. Of course, there is a lot of resources. Uh, we have to use our imagination to invent. The school that you see is, if you don't know the school and you arrive, you will ask yourself, where is the aircon? But there's no aircon in. You know, what I needed to do this is to have to study in Germany and go back and face my knowledge with reality is a poor place. And if you put, you create a building like it is, has been done in the past, you know, and you put an aircon to get it work, I mean, come on. We talk about the, the war in Ukraine, we're talking about energy. So as a student, for me, it was sure where you have no resources, you have to find ways to deal with it. 
That's why I invented this principle of creating a double roof system, a massive wall, and just create a natural, a passive ventilation. Uh, sometimes I say my breathing are breathing. Yeah, they're breathing. Kids can sit comfortably. And nowadays we have more than 1,000 students attending education there. It, it, it was a race, actually. Uh, it was an experiment. There was no money. I did the very first one. And then, even not six months later, uh, almost the entire village wanted to send their kids to school. So I had to raise, found money in Germany, which is not easy, to create an extension. And, uh, an extension, and suddenly, teachers' housing was needed because the teachers said, hey, we're going to stay in your village now. We don't want to go to the city. Build us cool buildings. You know, and we did it. Here we're already in a, uh, a project uh, for a friend called Christoph Schingesif. Uh, yesterday I was impressed that uh, one of uh, um, um, uh, d d d those intellectual and, and uh, uh, leader in Germany has known Christoph Schlingensief. Um, and uh, it's actually a very impressive project. It's and the Opera Village. It's the Opera Village. And it's a, when Christoph yeah. told me about it for the first time, it was like an utopia. Yeah. Uh, and it's an utopia which gets gradually built. Uh, yeah. There is one thing still missing. Can you yeah. tell us about it? No, it's a, the opera, the heart. It is, Hans used to say is the like Tokyo. The center is missing. It is a hole because there was no, no money to do it, um, uh, enough money. But then the version, this is a different project, but this, again, there are housing for artists. The idea Christoph had, or oh, we had to push and find an, 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 a way to explain the project, is to say it, sh it should grow like an organic system, like a, a, snack, a spiral, um, and then passive. If you have more resources, we add more structures. But the center hasn't been built yet. Uh, there is a, uh, you know, we didn't have the resources, but the idea for these artists, um, it's so powerful. Um, and I can recommend to everyone here, or even my scientific colleague that gave us a vision on the world, it is important to connect with artists. They sometimes have stupid ideas. And if we, we carefully listen, it can push us to another level, really. Uh, and that was this project, Christoph. And the uh, opera, it's based on, on three columns. There is culture, there is education, mm. there is health, there is a, a health station with an ambulance, there is a pharmacy. Can you talk a little bit about these dimensions? And then there will be yeah. Festspiele, like in Salzburg. Yeah. Uh, actually, when he came with the idea, we, f we faced criticism. And I was called, people will come to my office and say, you with your... You know, your great work and then your humanity. Why are you working with this crazy guy? You know, I said, wow, <laughs> you don't give me to do. He give me a job and you're calling me, telling me to call him a crazy guy. No, I don't believe you. And actually, uh, he was uh, criticized because opera has been seen as the, you know, the top 10, um, uh, you know, concern in the West. But that was not his idea. He has an e idea to really try to find a way how you can translate an, a universal idea uh, to a poor place. What Christoph wanted to do is to create a, you know, a place where artists can meet, where um, people from the surrounding can have access to uh, education, but also to health care facilities. I understood him, uh, but he put it a portion of art vision in in inside which is actually very great in Burkina. The project you're seeing, actually, is one of the most, of the most visited sites in Burkina Faso. Every new ambassador let, let uh, provoke you, from China to the US, <laughs> you know, coming first to Burkina, will visit this site after one month. Uh, and as an architect, sometimes I feel ashamed we couldn't do more. But no, as a vision, it is working. We have classes for more than uh, 100 kids now, and artists coming to perform out outside. So it's, it's a big success. And we did this training locals and using clay honestly from the site. Uh, the building you see is built from the excavation for the opera, which is a hole for the moment. You know? And people wonder, I know the secret, I'm just waiting. And we could do it.
Uh, now, in relation to the topic of this year's Convoca, the Bamako National Park is very important. I don't know if there's no, other this projects is before the, the next one is. Yeah. Actually, this is a, a wonderful project. That is the National Park in Mali. It's a restaurant. I'll just give you one comment of a German ambassador that time in uh, Bamako. It was an opening. As always, architects are under pressure. You know, you, d you did the work, so it means you went through all of this struggle. And the building is there. But as a, a designer, you see the mistakes, but then the suffering. And then the German ambassador popped in front of me. Okay, you know what you have created? It looks like if you have taken something from the heart of Switzerland and implemented in the middle of a place, and people just enjoy it. I say, wow, what a compliment. <laughs> we succeeded. And, and so it attracts and that, the that entire that city. Uh, no, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's in the heart of the city. What you see is also it, it, it is financed by the Aga Khan Foundation and even built by them. And the good thing in this project is now you have a lot of conflict in Mali, and this is where people meet for discussion. But also this is where uh, the expatriates are going to lie because there is a, a big park so naked, like they learn it in the West. And you have conservatives, especially Muslim group, coming to claim the park for themselves. And as an architect, you're very happy because you have everyone around your project. So <laughs> it's so wonderful, really, wonderful. And, and that actually, this is a restaurant, five stars. But on the, on the lower part, we have over even a tea, uh, where you could have, like, for 10 cents, you could have a good tea but you know what you will spend if you need to, to have a champagne. So it, it's very inclusive. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we can yeah. have the next And image. then, the, so the, what we saw before had a connection to the Oprah Village. Not this one. This one is a high school, Chorga High School. Uh, actually, a couple from Munich uh, really discovered the work and asked me to design a high school for them. Uh, talking to you actually about a high school, what you have seen before is now uh, a university. Of course, the high school was a big success. Not this one, this is still the Opera Village, but don't worry. Um, um, so, the, so we designed the high school um, in the third largest city in Burkina, um, and uh, suddenly so many people wanted to attend, and then the client get excited and then we've been talking about MIT, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Why you don't create this in Burkina Faso, in the site? I said, wow, we're struggling to finish the classroom and you're dreaming about Massachusetts. But suddenly you realize that they're aware about the lake of opportunities in this place. I'm architect, I love to experiment. And we created the so-called BIT, Burkina Institute of Technology. Let me say to you, in the middle of the desert, using mud in a different way, and it's going to be one of the leading schools in Africa, believe me. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Uh, and, and that is it, that is it. Of course, I need metal shit, I need rebars, Give me them, give me sand, give me mud, give me wood, I will create. And that's what I have learned to do in Germany. So again, no matter what Hans is talking, I want to say today we've been going through this. I mean, you have places and everyone here in this room, now that talent is equally, equally distributed in a, around the planet, around the globe, equally to Africa. And in some places, what we need, opportunities are missing. You know, I was born as the first son uh, of a traditional leader, very poor, very poor. Um, and I had the opportunity to go to school. Here I'm in Convoco, yeah. Convoco, sitting after so many colleagues of mine from high, high, great level, and to contribute, you know, to a debate. So schools and structures that I'm doing um, are opening opportunities for a lot of young people. 
So you continue to develop schools in many countries, no? It's, a, it's something you do, yeah. uh, which we continues. But then, of course, there are lots of other projects you're doing. You do um, housing. We also have images of the Leo Doctor's housing. What yeah. should we do next? Because you have yeah. so many projects to go through. We have Just about 15 click. minutes, yeah, 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah. No, it, it, I mean, uh, to com when I, got, I was invited, I was saying, wow, what a great place. And then uh, at dinner last night, I sat next to my, one of my heroes, uh, Roland uh, 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 Berger, you know, and then he just, he just asked me where I'm coming from. I said, Burkina Faso. And he said, oh, wait, Burkina Faso? You know, an artist. He was looking and said, and I just helped. Uh, yeah, uh, someone built an opera. I just said to him, yeah, yes, Christoph Schingsiff. Yeah, I was the architect. And then I look at to him, I saw his Roland Berger. I said, wow, okay. I, could, I, would, I was thinking myself, should you say to this guy that he belongs to your heroes, or should you shut your mouth and, <laughs> and do naive? <laughs> yeah, at the end, I, you know, there was a sympathy because these artists were so great. And, and again, that is another project. But I want to say for me, it's a pure privilege to be here. Um, and to, uh, Hans may allow me to add some of the words. Um, you know, we're going through very difficult times, and I think everyone in his field, if we put the energy that we can put, that is what we can do. So you will contribute to a, cha a, a change, you know, to build a better world, you know. But if we sit, you know, I came, had nothing in the back, you know. You see, this is like also laterite, but the outside, this is uh, uh, high school, and you have like wood. We have local wood, and I was saying, okay, create a double facade. Yeah? So this project is so complex, but so simple at the same time. And it is some of the very, very known project in the world now, because uh, it's not um, playing with expensive stuff, it's trying to deal with the environment, and that is what you have, you know, not more. So. And if we all behave like this, dealing with uh, ecology, uh, then we're going to go further. And I play. Here, what you see, don't cry. It's very simple. It's two materials, plywood and very thin uh, rebars. Uh, it is in Coachella. Don't laugh. What is Coachella? Coachella learned from my daughter. Uh, that is a music festival. And so, but they was asking me, you know, we have, we, we, we have a, a festival which is like really well visited and we want you to create um, sculptures that will play a role of orientation, you know, for the visitor. And I was saying, what? You go to a concert and you don't know where you're going to? <laughs> um, yeah. But then you went in and you tried to touch the spirit of the space. And you realize it's a giant festival. I say, oh my gosh, what can I do? You make Kanye West there, no? Yeah, 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 for example. Like, and you say, wow, well, what is it? Okay, I love baobabs, I love trees. And in the savannah landscape, if you go, you see a baobab, it is standing there, very giant. You know, it's a place where you could have an encounter. I decided to create giant baobab for Coachella. Uh, it was open in 2019. Now it is serving uh, a, a community in Palm Spring, a poor community called Indio. And it's, um, I got Texas that I have created the biggest um, open sky sculpture in the U.S. Say, wow, okay, good. Um, what an architecture. Architect can do with two materials, plywood, rebar, of course, a little bit of color. That is what I can do the best, and even in the U.S. Yeah. It's not this. This is another project. Can you click? I love this project. Yeah. I really love it. Click again. It's Montana. It's wonderful to enjoy a concert inside. But you know, my approach is even a rich country in the US, what do they have? If you arrive, you look at around and you talk to the client. By the way, the two next to Hans are the clients, Peter and Katie. So into music, into art. And they just ask me, you know, we have these wooden locks. Um, we want to have a pavilion for our visitors. Uh, and so 
I decided to create this pavilion using scales in the US, uh, because it's one of the leading nations. They have technology and they have natural wood. Okay, I can combine this with design and create something that people call added value. And that is the role of an architect nowadays. And uh, it doesn't need uh, more energy. It is open, well ventilated. And uh, next week, I was sup I'm supposed to be there to have a, a movie on the work because the US are impressed to see uh, what you can use, uh, what you can do using very simple material. Uh. So this is very much a pavilion, a permanent pavilion yes. in an extremely yeah. Yeah. Um, sort of landscape, hiking yeah. area, very yeah. different from what you did in London, which was yeah. a very urban pavilion. No? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe we can have the last images. Yeah, here is London. Yeah. Now the London pavilion. So this is the project in Leo. Uh, you will see that we try to work and try to create shade. This is the clinic. Uh, it's growing to become all one of the best visited clinics in Burkina. It's a, a doctor, um, Professor Rumstadt from Freiburg, who wanted actually to connect with the Opera Village. But uh, uh, it, it didn't happen uh, because the, 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 the friend, dear friend Christoph passed away. When we met, he was already affected by cancer and he passed away. Um, but then this doctor decided to, tr to try to create the facilities you know, where he can have his colleague go to Burkina often and make a treatment. Uh, you will see um, metal sheet, but if you see the clinic, uh, just click or not, whatever. Uh, what we try to do here is to create a, a system that works within. And we use mud to create this clinic. If you see a chirurgeon, what, you, what they're doing there, you're going to be shocked. But that is possible in a clay building. And it is important that everyone use his his available uh, material and resources to create. And that's how we can create a really strong uh, global community when we face to the local availability and what the local capacity. That's what I'm doing. Of course, I'm talking to you as a very privileged person, a person who has attained education. Um, but it's possible. Now, you know, uh, starting as a, someone who builds schools, uh, now I see myself facing giant project like this one. Um, actually, it's already built up. Now we have to, to pull and, and create the giant columns. Um, it's actually a parliament house in Benin, um, where I just told them, OK, a parliament house, we should not build like, a, uh, like the White House, but we should build l'arbre à the palaver tree. You know, that is our tradition. This is how you, we gather together uh, and, 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 and talk about problems. And you said that you wanted to create an open structure yes. so that people could, in a way, sit in the shadows. So it's for everyone, no? Yes, and that is it. Instead of uh, this inherited from colonial past, where you build a house and then you create an election system that you can fake. And so to protect yourself, you create uh, high walls and give people weapons to, to, to protect those actually those that are inside to take decision, but after finishing the, the meeting, they will move and go to neighborhood where everyone just come and shake them the hand. What of idea is this? So I didn't want to do so. I'm in, in my public buildings, I'm always facing, um, uh, you know, uh, idea, how can I create a public gathering space? You know, the building should be walkable. The building should be at any time accessible. I think this way the leader will be forced to make the right decision. Um, actually, it started with this project in Burkina Faso in 2016. There was a revolution because someone sitting on power have uh, for 30 years have decided to change uh, the constitution and that will make him a president alive. And people surrendered, and then they just burned down the parliament house. But um, then they came to you, a group came to you yes. of artists and politicians. Yeah. It was kind of self-organized, yeah. you know, bottom yeah. up. Yeah. yeah, activists, and asking me uh, to design a new parliament house, which should be very strong, transparent, having a museum, 
and him being a memorial for those people that have been killed there. I was listening and said, wow, wow, what a big project. Can you tell us about it? Because it's a pyramid, yes. but the idea is also that there is a landscape on it. Yeah. Again, it would be, I mean, it's interesting because when Khan did the parliament in Bangladesh, initially yeah. uh, he wanted the population to use it. No, yeah. Now it's a security zone and it's very yeah. difficult to get in, yeah. but it was actually the idea that it would be a parliament for everyone. Yeah. So the parliament house in Burkina actually now, if you imagine my position, I'm in Germany and I have a com big commission like this. So what do you do? So you're coming from that country. So what you don't know is actually I am very well known in the country. So the pressure they, they will put in you is, uh, if you say no, they will say, okay, uh, the country is in struggle and they want to create a, a national project and they call their famous son, now I am a son of everybody, and he refuses to come. This is name killing. And even it can go through to your tribe, you know. They will go and say, you guys, you don't want to be part of the nation because your son refuses to build. Okay, I was condemned to create it. So I created a huge pyramid. Hoping they will just say, oh, Mr. Architect, it is nice, but these are dreams we cannot afford. I can't come, go back to Berlin and just keep doing my work. Yeah, to my surprise, I went to see these people that asked me to design, and I talked to them. What did I say? Ah, no leader, not in Burkina, no leader in Africa will ever accept an open building like this. And Francis, very happy inside myself, okay, I can go. But go and present it to the president of the parliament house. I went to meet him, I was waiting, I wanted to enter, and then the French ambassador uh, arrived, so I have to wait. They finish, they called me to enter, the American ambassador arrived, so I had to wait. So it took so long, um, and suddenly he came, and I was already, I would say, he's tired. Now he will say, you dreamer, go back to Germany. Um, you don't know our reality. You cannot design something like this. So he started to look at and looked, and looked, and looked at back to me, Mr. Architect, now I am Mr. Architect. I love your project very much, but you have to make it bigger for our nation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I went back to Berlin, my team was waiting for me to celebrate the, uh, you know, the, you know, the rejection of the project. I said, no, no, no. We have to work hard. And often you do this without comp compensation. But the good thing is, it was a project that is well accepted, leading even the Guardian to dig deeper in the Burkina Faso history and talk about the country, the revolution, the struggle of the people. So for an architect, we are almost like artists. Some unbuilt project can be even relevant than any other because it has generated a lot of projects in Africa. Uh, so the Parliament House in Benin, which is now under construction. But it's interesting because often it sort of oscillates also between micro and macro. Yeah. Um, and this gigantic, actually, pyramid was yeah. initially a playground in your pavilion. Yeah. No? Yeah. Yeah. Can we maybe look at that image? Yeah. Um, which there okay. we, you are in another world. Oh, of course, I'm a designer. I shall I do this. But if we have a minute yeah. and you like me to say here... That would be great, yeah. I have been appointed... Um, Professor in Munich, a very influential president, um, Mr. Kauf, uh, Hermann. And then um, he looked at me and hand over the paper and sign. So officially, I was professor. And then he added, say, you know, uh, normally in past time, if we hire someone because he has a talent, we normally give him something, an object, and he has to prove his talent. So. Ah, in Garching, we have a project. Maybe you should think about it. Weeks when nothing came, and I was very happy. No need to prove myself in Munich. And then I was invited to a dinner um, uh, in, the, in the tower of, of the school. There is a, a, a Glock tower. And so suddenly, a lady stand and say, yeah, 
you know why we have Mr. Kerry here? Um, we want to have a, a project in uh, Garshing, uh, a tower that will represent the entire campus. I sat, and everyone was looking to me to design a tower. And that is the result, what you have seen. So we see time is showing, but it's like the glass tower, which I wanted to be interdisciplinary by turning the, the building to really connect and play a catalyst. Because the campus has growing. A big company in Germany gave money for one institute. Another one gave. There was no, there just, there was no master plan. And I was supposed to give a new head to that. And that is not this. This is Triennale. We just opened this now. So just to end up, yeah, let's yeah. end on your most recent project. That's yeah, the yeah. Triennale in Milano. You did three things for the Triennale. You yeah. did installations and you also did a little tower. Yeah. So this is very it's simple. It's about the unknown. Yes, the unknown, unknown and unknowns, which is known by yourself as a, 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 a really a political expression. It was a philosophical concept. And then uh, Rumsfeld used it, made it pop popular when he tried to explain the war in a, in a, um, in a, against Iraq. Uh, he, so the unknown, unknown, you know, he described it. But then uh, the Triennale has decided to explore the world of unknown, unknown. Uh, you know, we're facing COVID and all of these uh, issues. Um, and then uh, for me to be part of a curator and designer, I just wanted to make a symbol. You know, we often get frustrated. We're running away. Uh, we facing a lot of problems, and we forget to think or to breathe. And here, um, so it, it finished now, it's even colorful. I wanted to invite the visitor to enter. You just go really low. To enter the tower, you have to go on the knee, which is great for European. They don't do this often. You go, <laughs> you go and then you, you should lift yourself, and then you see painting, and the more you lift your head, you will discover painting that end up in openings, and so, and then suddenly you have the sky and yourself or your community. And the idea what I have is to just tell us, guys, let us dream, dream big, and imagine between us and the sky, that is so much space. Look at, we have found a vaccine against COVID. Who would have ever thought about that? You know, and my architecture is creating comfort for those that are underserved, that have nothing, but also pushing other that may have everything to even think about saving. Because we have one planet. No matter where you're coming, from Djibouti, from Ukraine, from Russia, what will happen, or China, what will happen in one place will affect all of us. Thank you very much. Francis, this is really moving, touching, and it's beyond. I think we all get demütig. I don't know the German word demut when we listen to you. And then this amazing beauty, what you create, is really out of the world. I think we all uh, agree on this. Thank you, Francis. Thank you very, very Thank much. It's just a comment. Uh, do allow me to express my admiration as well. And to express uh, my hope that perhaps sometimes you will build a new Kanzleramt in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a question, Francis. What is your biggest wish? Um, so oh, actually, a big wish. Yeah, no. Actually, if I have a wish, is a, a peace and freedom. And someone said it, uh, yeah. so Cameron, yeah. yeah. Uh, and for your work? Some, yeah, someone said it today, which is very strong. What we're looking for is freedom and peace. If we don't have it, we cannot enjoy our life. Uh, and mm -hmm. for my own work, so um, yeah, I like to work with very inspiring uh, uh, partner. Uh, I don't call them clients, partner. Um, we ask, for example, uh, a friend of us, if we could talk about a chalet that I'm building in, a, in somewhere in Switzerland, uh, where um, we have the chance to have artisans from Africa connect with uh, very high level Swiss, Swiss uh, you know, um, um, artisan and, 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 and workforce, and to create something that like really link Africa to this very rich country. 
So the idea is to be able to work with um, clients that allow for innovation, you know, and look what is abundant, what is uh, available, how can we use it to create this unique space, which is architecture or places where we're spending most of our time, you know. We're spending all of our time in building, build environment, and we have to put more care on it. And you also have a, another dream, which is to build a tower in Burkina <laughs> Faso and to build a tower in London, and then they will kind of watch each other. Can you tell about that? Can I about that? <laughs> this was seven years ago. Hans, I have become serious. <laughs> I'm a Prisca winner, and then I have been listed as one of the most influential in this year uh, by Times. I cannot do any random stuff anymore. <laughs> you know. No, no, no. Um, no, it was like because there was a battle uh, about London trying to cut itself from Europe. And then, you know, you cannot understand this. You know, in places people are struggling. But then we have this block that is united, allowed, you know, people to travel freely. And you want to cut your country from the rest of the world. I couldn't understand. And I was saying, let dream, let try to find a way to escape this situation and, you know, thinking about. Uh, you know, you all have read about romance and then someone trying to throw a stone in the window for the lover's one to look down and you could just spin ideas to create the lighter, how you can connect. And I was saying, those with the same spirit should be able to have towers where we can really connect, uh, no matter what those politicians are doing on the ground. Uh, like to be connected to spirit, you know. Um, dreaming about like bubble towers. I mean, we have to have fantasy. If we don't, you know, what is happening in the world may make us be too um, uh, depressed and we will not create, but people are waiting from, from all of us here. So from the Institute, I know you, but I'm happy to see you here, uh, giving that data every day. And, and we need a little bit of fantasy to push all of us to keep going on, you know? You know? Thank you, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Do and we have more questions? To find solutions. <laughs> Yeah, we have a question here. Monika Schnitzer. So I was just wondering where you get your inspiration, so where you, where you get your visions from, how the buildings would look. No, no um, so nature is a good example. Um, and uh, just to think, and then the limitation. Uh, you have to be sure what is it. But in my, the center of my work is a human being. Um, I'm thinking, how can I design for people in the the way that you feel yourself fulfilled being in the, in the environment, but also for those that will be passing by, being a neighbor. A building is affecting everyone. And so if you put all of these together and you think about nature, that is the perfect designer, then you will come to solution that I'm doing. And so uh, nowadays, more than ever, we are facing four very quick topics. We have climate change, you know, we have reference limitation, we have conflicts that are getting stronger, and population growth. So if you think about Africa, where you're going to have a huge number of people coming, you need first to inspire, you know, so that they don't look to the West. OK? Now I'm political. And try to do sheep copies. So you need to really find, put all of these together. That's what I'm putting together, and to create the buildings that I'm doing, so that the kids feel inspired, and it's a model even using the most, you know, cheap material like clay. And this way, you're really creating a confidence uh, to stay and not to look somewhere else. And by the same way, it is one of us. That is how my work is being seen in Africa. And so this is, for me, not just inspiration, it's nutrition for my creativity. Yeah, and we go, like you, I mean, uh, listening to your work, how you see, if, you know, we have to keep pushing. This is the inspiration. Yeah. Look, yeah. And, you say you. The, and you say the local is often the inspiration that you build with local materials that you inspire by local context. What would you do in Salzburg? What does Salzburg need? <laughs> 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 Very well, concretely. We yeah. go from the utopic, yeah, yeah. From the utopic <laughs> yeah, of no. Corinne's question of yeah. what you dream of yeah. you know, to the very <laughs> concrete. Yeah. It, it's a rich place. It already has a f world famous opera, um, uh, and, uh, but it's, it has a potential. 
like I'm saying you, there is a huge potential. Um, we can create. It has wood. It has great people uh, looking for new. You know, we need to put freshness in the existing, and this will allow us to go to the next level.